Hey guys, I've never done an unboxing video before, so we're gonna start things off with a treat, thanks to all these goods from Simagic. Let's waste no time, let's get started. So we have more than enough to get started racing. All we really need is a rig to bolt all this stuff to. Um, I do want to say a big thank you to Simagic in conjunction with their distributor simrigs.com and my local dealer Racecraft. And in the interest of full disclosure, none of this belongs to me. It's on loan and I have to give it all back after I'm done filming. Anyhow, we have a Simagic Alpha Mini. We've got the P1000 pedals. We've got the FX and GTS steering wheels, two of the haptic pedal reactors with their power supply and also the mounting system for the Alpha Mini. And uh, I am actually getting an Alpha Ultimate, which is coming tomorrow, which I can't unbox for obvious reasons. One of the things that stands out to me is that the packaging is really different from the wheels and the pedals and wheel base. And my guess is that underneath these shipping boxes, the retail boxes are gonna be underneath there, but we'll find out soon. All right, let's start with the main course. So I'm gonna have a look at the Alpha Mini. And this box actually interests me a lot because if we look at the label here, it says that it's the Alpha Mini wheelbase without QR. So I'm curious to see what that means. Um, is it no wheel side QR? Or is it that it's just gonna be like a stem like you get with um, like a VRS Direct Force Pro? So let's go ahead and have a look. The question is, what's beneath the brown box? It is a retail box, just as I thought. Get out of there. All right, so we've got a nice retail box in good shape. Let's tear into it. Nicely, of course. Thank you, Simagic. Okay, so it opens on the side. Let's tip it up. Okay. And I'm actually gonna slide it forwards because there's, there's a lid on this. My vast experience in unboxing definitely showing here. Okay, so. We've got more stickers than you can shake a stick at. Gosh, that's a lot. And we have a warranty card in a nice, quite a thick plastic Ziploc baggie. Okay, lid comes off. Here we go. All right, so we can see that there's segments in the box here and a couple of empty spots. So presumably there would be a QR in there somewhere. And this is something that I noticed with um, the mounting kit for the um, Alpha, which we'll go into in a, a bit, but um, Allen keys included, which is really nice. Again, these, um, these Ziploc bags are really nice. They're, they're really thick and they've got the Simagic branding on there as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, we have a AC power, so nice to see an Australian plug on there. Um, that's not always a given. Um, when I bought my, uh, my Canon DSLR, which was a lot of money. Uh, that came with a American plug and I had to put a 50 cent adapter on it to run on Australian power. So um, definitely like that touch. We've got a nice USB A to B cable, nice soft touch on that. Not sure on the length, looks plenty. We have an external power brick. This is pretty compact. What are we looking at here? 36 volts, seven amps, 252 watts. Nice and light, compact. That's a pretty junk, uh, chunky DC jack. And the Alpha Mini itself. Oh gosh, it's got some heft to it. Wow. All right. Oh my gosh, look at, <laughs> look at the indent in the packing foam that the Alpha Mini has left. That is oh, quite weighty really. And pleased to see that there is in fact a QR on the nose. 
There is a sticker on the front. I think that's to protect the electronic contacts. Um, all right, so let's look at the wheelbase itself. So they've actually pre-applied some stickers. So I guess there's a, an official partnership with uh, Formula Drift. And okay, I'm also liking that we have the plugs on the sides of the unit. So on the left and the right. So we've got USB for CAN bus, safe B, whatever that means. So I'm guessing the right hand side USB and power is really where 99% um, of us are gonna have the plugs in. Um, that looks really good. Oh, this is interesting, check this out. So this is floating in the air and as I spin the shaft, the green lights up. So there's some kind of inductive uh, power generator there, which is pretty cool. Nice touch. Okay, now I'm gonna tidy up a little bit. So all the peripherals will go back into their little spots in the box, but I'm not gonna tidy up fully because I wanna get into the next stuff. I'm not really sure what the, uh, the etiquette is with multiple unboxings. Am I meant to put everything back exactly where it was or um, do I just sort of keep tearing into new ones? I am gonna subscribe to the ladder because I wanna see these pedals. All right, so these are the P1000s. Now, let's have a look at the label here. So it says P1000 modular pedal. Um, underneath there, we've got P1000 modular hydraulic pedal, which I didn't know was an option. We've also got a P1000i modular inverted pedal or a P1000i RS modular inverted hydraulic pedal. Gosh, that's a, that's a tongue twister and a half. Um, all right, P1000 pedals. Let's go ahead and have a look. Practicing knife, knife safety, cut away from the body where possible. All right, and we have more retail packaging, which is good. So let's grab the handle. All right, one thing that I like is that the fit of the retail box inside the shipping box is close, but it's not like super tight. So it's not like the company's showing off their control of tolerances. And, and I actually like this fit because when it's so tight and it produces that vacuum when you pull it out, uh, which some other manufacturers, Apple in particular, <laughs> do this. Um, it's just really hard to get the equipment out of the box and that's no fun for me. All right, so anyways, we have, again, um, Formula Drift branding. We also have iRacing and what's this, Virtual Drift Championship? All right. Um, I am not a big drifter. I did a little bit um, of sideways stuff in real life in my Evo, but never, uh, proper drifting and I've, I've not really been into the virtual drift either um, so I'm curious to see what uh, what drifting is available uh, online so yeah definitely gonna have a look at that and we've got some some hype man messages here and look I, I appreciate the effort um, it's never really been for me all those hype messages uh, but we have, wow, that's a lot of stickers. Good on them, good on them. I've never really been big on stickers. Um, if you look at my car or my rig, oh, if you look at my rig, you see my logo everywhere, but um, <laughs> uh, stickers, I always just end up with a box full of them and not really knowing what to do with them. All right, we have, what's here? Springs, bolts, bit of hardware in there. I'm going to put this aside. We have some instructions, a quick guide. That looks pretty good. I like that this is in color. Um, I mean, it's just black and red, but the red has really nice contrast. So it's going to be nice and easy. One side's in Chinese, one side is in English. So that's going to cover, hopefully, a lot of users' needs. We've got a heel rest. Ooh, and some hidden goodies underneath. All 
I have more things than I have hands. All right, what have we got here? Rubber and polyurethane. So some elastomers. Interesting. So it looks like we have um, different options for rubbers and uh, polyurethane shapes. So we've just got those ticked on the top. Little discs. Interesting. These feel like metal rods of some sort. And this is the heel rest. So that's really nicely finished. I'm just gonna, no, let's, let's get the pedals out. How does one get these out? Okay, just gonna take the whole thing out. <laughs> It has been so long since I've unpacked new sim racing gear, so this is just an awesome opportunity. These are not too heavy, I like that. Okay, so I really like that these are not too heavy. Um, it, it's no fun to have a workout putting your rig together. Um, but the, the heel rest is nice and light. The red color, I, I gotta say, it's actually quite toned down in all the photos and videos I see online. It always seems to show up really bright, which wasn't really my taste, but that red color actually is pretty good. So I like that. The finish is really nice. It feels nice to my hands. Not that I'm gonna be touching it with my hands a lot. Um, we have a little warning sticker here, which says, do not hot swap, Simray. That is Simray. All right, so it must be something to do with the, um, the haptic pedal reactors. So let's have a look. I'm just going to put this aside here. And let's have a look at the pedals themselves. So they're really nicely finished. Wow, okay. These are cool. So if I turn it to the side, and you can have a look at the clutch pedal here, um, it's quite nicely machined. Um, so all of the edges are beveled, so there's, there's no sharp edges, there's no burrs. We've got a little circlip here. That's cool. Spring, probably a stack of elastomers in, in the brake. Not sure what's in the throttle. But everything looks quite nice. Um, we have on the throttle here a little sliding scale, kind of like a volume scale, which is probably low resistance, high resistance. Nice anodized finish on some of these um, fasteners. And this, um, I'll actually turn this around this way so that you can see the adjustment here, which is like a rotation adjustment. So that would adjust the pedal face tilt um, without adjusting much else of the, of the uh, pedals. So that probably gives you a lot of scope for simple pedal ergonomic adjustments. And I gotta say, I like these. I didn't think that they would be so compact um, back to front. I do like that they're all um, sort of pre-mounted, ready to go. Um, it looks to me like the pedal spacing between each individual pedal is not adjustable. So if we have a look from the front, uh, it doesn't seem, no, I tell a lie actually. There are an extra set of threaded holes by the uh, clutch here. Doesn't look like there's one on the brake. I could be wrong, there might be something underneath the, the plate here, underneath there. And also on the throttle here, we've got the uh, threaded holes on the side. So it looks like we can move the clutch over to the left a little, the throttle over to the right a little. And between those adjustments, that may be enough to um, get the pedal spacing exactly where you like it. Now I see that there is a big counter bore on the back here for mounting, so you can just bolt straight through. If the throttle was moved over to the side here, that would get into the, in the way of that mounting. So, if you're going to move the throttle to the side, I'm guessing that you're going to have to um, bolt the plate down before you move the throttle and bolt it into position. 
Um, these guys, all right, these, these little domes look to be little um, jack covers. So the fact that they all say uh, HPR makes me think that you just pluck those out with some tweezers. My fingers, bit, bit chubby for that. Um, so that would be where you plug in the, uh, the pedal exciters, which, oh, here we go. Uh, let's pick this up. Oh. And I make that sound because I'm weak, not because these are heavy. <laughs> but um, we've got threaded mounting holes on the back of these pedals, uh, presumably for those pedal reactors. So it looks like um, it was definitely designed with that in mind, which is nice. I like a cohesive um, product arrangement. All right, and oh, I really should have thought this out more because I keep turning this around. But let's look at the pedal faces. We can see that th we have uh, four mounting holes a piece for the pedal faces. They've got a nice textured finish. Um, I race in shoes, so I think that should be quite nice for me. Um, barefoot, I don't know how that texture would go. I guess I could give it a try. Uh, you guys know that I wear funky socks and I'd be uh, glad to showcase my, my latest designs uh, on the channel. But we can move the pedal faces up or down from the stock configuration. So we will see how that works stock and whether I need to make any adjustments or not. Overall, I'm impressed. Let's have a look at the heel rest. Okay, if I move the pedals out of the way. So the heel rest is really light now that I've been moving those pedals around so much. Um, no, I thought something was rattling around, but um, I don't think that's the case. All right, so we can see that there's um, holes through the plate here for mounting. So I guess um, these are designed in mind to be together always. So it's not an option to run with or without the, the tray. Um, you're gonna have to do that, I think. We have different mounting holes for a fore and aft adjustment of this heel rest, which is good. A couple of magnets there, I think. Um, there must be some peripherals that uh, I didn't receive which um, slip onto there, so not really sure what would go on there. Um, yeah, we may or may not find out. Okay, probably some rods to connect the heel plate to the pedals. Cool, all right, well that pretty much satisfies my curiosity with the pedals. I'm just gonna put these aside. And put our handful of stickers away as well. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the FX steering wheel. So this one is probably more exciting to me because I predominantly race F3s on iRacing. So open wheelers are where it's at. Um, I generally haven't felt like a formula rim shape is essential to the experience, but wow, that's interesting. Okay. so. We have a lot of stickers. We have tweezers and all sorts of Allen keys from absolutely miniature to regular sized. So that's awesome. You can just really customize this all you want. Fabulous. All right. Warranty card, more stickers. Where are the Formula Drift stickers? Maybe I had a... Um, Maybe this wheel is from an earlier batch before the licensing agreement was made. And we have, oh, I like this, okay. So quick start guide, uh, clutch calibration, factory reset, etc. I do like, I know that going digital is uh, the sort of environmentally friendly way to go, but I gotta say, just having a card, one page, you know, just a quick reference guide is really good from a user-friendly point of view. Woo, all right, here we go. USB cable. All right, so it's a USB A to C. I'm not sure if this is um, just for firmware updates or if you can actually run it via USB as well. But let's go ahead and get this wheel out.
and the box can go away. Okay, that's really nice. Um, now this is not fair to Simagic. Um, so as I feel these grips, they're a really nice uh, soft touch plastic uh, rubber coating of some sort. And I really, really like that soft touch. But I have been burned in the past with um, like remote controls, um, a hairdryer that had a soft touch coating. And after a few years, they just turned to gummy muck. And I'm not, <laughs> I probably shouldn't mention that um, in this video because it's, it's definitely not fair to say magic um, because not all the soft touch uh, plastics I've uh, encountered do that. But it does give me just a little bit of pause. Um, hopefully it's not an issue. Uh, we have the quick release, which I'm really excited to try out because everyone says that the Simagic quick release is market leading. And I only really have experience with the Fanatec uh, QR1. I know that the QR2 just released, uh, which Fanatec did not send me uh, a sample. But um, yes, I'm really excited to see what this um, market leading quick release is meant to be like. So looking forward to that. Um, having a look at the carbon paddles, these are definitely thicker than the Fanatec ones, easily. Um, double, maybe? I'll get some calipers and check. But we've got a couple of clutch paddles. Nice shift action on those magnetic shifters. Um, shifter feel, um, these have a little bit of damping. They have a little bit of like a rubbery stop rather than a clack, clack, clack. And this is actually, I've never raced with this before, so once I actually get this on the rig and start driving, I'll definitely give you guys my impressions. Um, but I definitely do feel like the really stiff click of the Fanatec magnetic shifter is just a bit stark. Um, I've, I've never really enjoyed um, how strong they are. So the fact that this is a little bit damped is re definitely right up my alley. And you know, I know that might be a very personal thing, uh, but that is my truth. Um, okay, let's have a look. We have some thumb encoders, really nice action on there. Some more thumb encoders, also nice. Um, one thing that I find with the Simagic uh, wheels is that they don't photograph that nice until they're powered on because all of these buttons look drab and gray, uh, but it turns out they're all RGB, which is really cool. So I've never had a backlit uh, steering wheel before. Really looking forward to that. We've got a number of dials on here. This is more functionality than most of you will ever need. Um, really nice to see that. Uh, we've got a nice thick carbon plate. And yeah, this is, it's wide actually. I've just realized in my hands, I haven't measured this. I'll, I'll check the specs on this, but it's, it's quite wide, wider than I'm used to with my Fanatec uh, Club Sport V2. So I'm curious to see how that goes because I've, I've always found the smaller diameter perfectly fine to use. This one's a little bit bigger. Yeah, cool. Very excited to give that a try. There we go. Okay, let's go to the GTS wheel. So something interesting, this box came with a couple of tears and also the graphic is upright and that's upside down. So I'm guessing someone's gotten into this before me. That's fine. <laughs> Just undid all my hard work there. All right. Okay, just have to figure out where the lid is, slide it out. Okay. Let's make some space. Okay, so same thing, we've got tons of stickers, um, tweezers. It looks like there's fewer Allen keys in this one. Um, I wonder why that is. Hmm. Anyway, so stickers, stickers, stickers. Quick guide, thumbs up from me. Woohoo, here we go. So same thing, we've got a USB-A to USB-C cable here. 
and this is the rim. So we have uh, what feels to me like a leather rim, nice stitching, um, a fair bit fewer buttons than the uh, FX wheel. All right. Um, I'm not sure how these compare price-wise. Um, I'll have to have a look. Um, this is meant to be a, a unboxing only. Um, I won't even have a chance to um, have any driving impressions just yet because I am still waiting on the rig. But um, we've got nice, um, oh, here we go. The center indicator is, to my hand, it's leather. So that's nice. Um, I thought that they would have just put some tape there, um, but that's, that's a really nice touch. I like the shift feel, slightly dampened, right up my alley. Nice quick release. And looks like on this uh, GTS wheel, we have a rev bar, which is not there on the FX wheel, which is interesting. I would have thought, if anything, the FX wheel would have had it rather than the round wheel. In terms of diameter, I think it's just a touch bigger than the FX wheel. And I haven't raced on a round wheel in years. Uh, so that'll be fun to, you know what, get onto some formula drift and uh, flex those, those skills which I have not practiced in over a decade. Nice. This is very lightweight, got to say. Definitely lighter than the FX wheel. And light is good. Light means that your base doesn't have to work so hard. All right, good. Let's have a look at these haptic pedal reactors. I'm only going to open the one on camera since they're probably going to be identical. What have we got here? A ball ended Allen key. We've got a little cable management clip which has double sided tape on it. A couple of little countersunk bolts. Instructions black and red. Love seeing the high contrast of those. Um, arrows on the instructions. And we've got, wow, this is chunky. Okay. It's heavier than I thought. And it's actually pretty big in the hand. We've got like a mounting shim. And yeah, here we go. So we've got a, a DC jack and that's just gonna go into the pedals. Um, I'll have a closer look at this in a proper review coming up, but um, that DC jack would go into there. And I guess you would just have them mounted this way, something like that. And in terms of size, um, these are big, seriously. And, and you've got one for each foot. That is gonna be interesting, very interesting. And as I shake it like a maraca, not, not like a maraca, like a cocktail shaker, I can definitely feel something thumping around inside. So I think this is um, like a, a linear um, solenoid type of uh, movement. Okay, power supply. The most exciting of all things, power supplies. You know, a joke, but without power, we would not be able to enjoy our hobby. So here we go. Okay, so little power brick. Again, nice to see the uh, Australian power plug. Uh, it's just a little, uh, a little touch that just shows that the companies are actually thinking about us. So that's nice. Um, yeah, good, all right. So I'm curious why there's actually a power plug when these plug into the pedal base. Okay, I think what's happening is if you don't have these transducers on the pedals, you can run these just on USB. But if you do run these, then there's a power jack in the back of the pedals, which is only if you do need to run these big boys. So I think that's the way it goes. All right. And things are starting to get a little bit messy here because I've opened almost everything. So I'm just gonna tidy up a little bit. Uh, 
And that leaves us with the mounting for the Simagic Alpha Mini. So we've got the T-nuts, bolts, a couple of Allen keys. Um, definitely love the fact that they give us Allen keys. Uh, for people who don't have a complete toolkit, that's really great. I do prefer um, Allen keys that have the ball ends just to give a bit of mounting flexibility. But the ball ends do give you more of an option to, uh, or more of an opportunity rather, to round off those hexes. So, uh, you know, I will never complain about receiving something free. Uh, that definitely does add value, saves you time, even if you end up with a carton full of these uh, by the time that you're done. And the mounting plates. These are fabulous. I gotta say, um, I'm a sucker for quality machining and these are really nice. Um, a few years ago, I saw um, just bent sheet metal uh, brackets for, I think it was the Simagics. Um, and that's what I was expecting, but these are very lovingly machined, anodized aluminum. Um, the countersinks are just beautiful. The, the, um, the branding is nice. The left and right, definitely appreciated because it's so easy um, to fit stuff on the wrong sides. I've definitely done that more than once. Um, the edges are all beveled. The surface finish is great. This is really nice. Very nice to see a lot of care in a part that is so critical to you know, the, the racing experience. I mean, if, if your wheelbase is not securely mounted, there's no point. All right, let's uh, tidy up and, and have some final thoughts after the unboxing. So that just about wraps up my unboxing. And I wanna ask you guys, how did I do? I have never done an unboxing before. I don't know if I broke any unwritten rules of unboxing, but I can say that it is quite a mess around me because, uh, the boxes just fly to the side and I'm right into the gear. Um, big thank you to Simagic, Simrigs.com and Racecraft for uh, helping make this happen. Um, I'm really looking forward to actually trying out the hardware because, you know, it's one thing to hold it in the hands, it's another to actually race and hopefully win with it. Um, in terms of pricing, uh, I am not familiar with the pricing of any of this whatsoever, uh, but I do remember uh, when I was looking online, the pricing on the Alpha Mini in particular was pretty sharp. So um, the price to performance is gonna be something that's very interesting to me as I mount these on the rig and give it a try. Um, so as always, leave a comment, please like and subscribe if you wanna see more content. Um, the channel is growing and uh, having collaboration with some of these partners is really exciting. And also uh, just a reminder, that on my website, if you do want to support the channel, uh, there are a few different tiers of support. And the top tier, which is entrepreneur, that's the one that I'm most excited about because that is um, allowing access to all the resources on my website, which actually go through what it's like to be a content creator. Uh, I'm an open book on everything that I've learned, things that I uh, found worked and things that I found didn't work uh, because Six months ago, I didn't even know I was going to put a video on YouTube. And five months from my first ever video, uh, I've got the opportunity to try some really nice hardware that I didn't have to spend my own money to, uh, to try and to have fun with. So thank you so much to everyone who watched. Thank you to everyone who's been with me from the beginning. Uh, thanks to everyone who helps me behind the scenes with these videos, which you don't really uh, see. But if you do join the entrepreneurship, then of course you're gonna be privy to all of that information. So lots of content coming, which you can probably figure out from here. Um, there's actually a lot of content which is not on the table at the moment, which I'm really excited about. So yeah, between now and the end of the year, there's just gonna be so much to, to do together, so many conversations that we're gonna be able to have. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much.